agricultural economic sabotage law, mm. we are pe penalizing also the the co-op which we gave uh, what you call this st storage warehouse or storage facility that they are liable also and the penalty is life sentence also and non-bailable. So because the, the uh, government gave them warehouse and they're not allowing the farmers to use the warehouse. Instead, they are leasing it to the middleman. The, it's the easy way of uh, earning money. So, yes. it's madali. Parang, pero to just, just to trace the history of that way, of that uh, cold storage facility, bed, yes. warehouse, cold storage facility. Cold storage okay. facility. That was built by government the government. Funds. Government, okay. government was given to the co-op. Given in the sense that it was donated to the co-op and it's now uh, a property of the co-op? Yes. Ah, so that's, that's our... That's oh, the program uh, of the day. Yes, DA? yes. If you give it to the co-op, then the co-op will run it. Is it a use of rock or really a donation? Donation. Donation. Okay, so we have such... How long have we had such a... ...term yes, president, sir. minority floor leader, because it has been our experience in the past that we asked the PSA for the demand and the supply the demand of a certain product and the supply uh, available locally and uh, what they import is much much more than the shortage that's why uh, we have that problem so i hope we will not be doing that in the future under the new leadership mr president okay so i hope the secretary addresses that no uh Alam mo, pinapabalik po namin yung PSA sa, sa, sa Friday, right? The PSA. The, re the main reason was because of this passport uh, fiasco. Oh. Pero when, when, I, when I supported the motion to recall the PSA, I stated because of their agricultural statistics. It was with a heavy heart that I... I uh, went along with the approval of their of their budget. But I really question their the reported uh, statistics or figures and data by the PSA on agriculture. So may we know how how we will address this con garbage in, garbage out. Uh, as I pointed out to the PSA uh, director dito, we were determining we are. We are determining the amount of importation that we should allow, and yet in computing that, in the earlier, in the early steps, in inputted, inputted na si ka importation. So it's re, it's a self-reinforcing uh, formula being observed by both DA and the PSA. So may we know from the secretary through the sponsor uh, how he hopes to address our data gathering, our agricultural statistics, because kung hindi natin to improve, mala, garbage in, garbage out, ang epekto, pahirap sa taong bayan, uh, Mr. President. Uh, before, uh, the DA has a Bureau of Agricultural Statistics. Now, uh, they, trans they abolished that and they transferred the uh, determination of statistics to PSA. And uh, there's something wrong with the statistics. So, uh, maybe uh, in the future, maybe uh, the Department of Agriculture can create their own so the, the figures will be better. Diba? In one of their uh, agency in the department, Maybe they can create uh, uh, their own statistics so that uh, we will not rely on PSA. Pero uh, one thing strange, uh, Mr. President, is kanyari for onions. Dito, ito hindi ko ma-reconcile ma pa po sa, sa, sa mind ko. If we are importing more than the actual need of the market, then why did the price rise? Uh, that's yeah? why to astronomical levels, uh, Mr. President. I mean. Mr. President, that's why we're passing the anti-agricultural economic sabotage law because uh, there is also that practice of cartel. 
they control the supply and then they create uh, what you call as uh, uh, artificial demand. That's why they are able to sell the price, the 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 object at a high price. Like for example, onion. The cost of producing onion is 25 centa uh, 25 pesos per kilo. And then the 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 ones who produce the onion in Bindoro told me in the hearing that they bought the onions from them for from eight pesos to fifteen pesos per kilo. This uh, middleman, mm. because they were forced to sell the onion because they have no uh, storage facility. Mm. Mabubulok lang yung onion, kaya napuwersa silang to sell the onions at a loss. And then this. Uh, uh, Middleman, this cartel, they sold it uh, for 600 to 700 per kilo. So that's really abuse of uh, of uh, the cartel. That's why we're passing the agricultural economic sabotage law, which will be penalize these people taking advantage of consumer uh, by. Uh, uh, Ang penalty is uh, life sentence. Uh, yes, we, 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 life we, we, sentence. We, and if there is a penalty of life sentence, then they it's non bailable. Yes. So even if they can fix the court, they will stay in the prison while their uh, their uh, case is being heard by a special court. We're creating a special court for uh, agri. Uh, ano, uh, anti agricultural economics uh, agriculture sabotage law uh, the supreme court has gave, has given their uh, uh, approval that we create a special court for this kind of uh, 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 crime so we're making it harder for them to be able to smuggle and to control or to uh, ho to profit to profit or to hoard and to control the supply of agricultural products. Thank you. We, we will work hard on the on the bill, uh, Mr. President. Joint effort na po yan ng majority and uh, minority. Uh, we'll make sure as much as possible uh, to make a, to make to make it as airtight as possible while complying with the constitution, with the with the rights even of the accused, Mr. President. Our sponsor mentioned in the course of discussing the, the, pheno, the that phenomenon we encountered where uh, onion prices rose to astronomical levels, the lack of storage facility. Okay. Are we addressing that uh, issue in the budget for, of the DA for 2024? Uh, we are. Yes, we are okay. building nine costing 374 million but in addition in the agriculture economic sabotage law uh, we are penalizing because usually gi we give the warehouse to co-op of farmers mm. but we discovered during uh, uh, the rice shortage uh, uh, onion shortage in 2018 yeah I went to Nueva Ecija because they are also the biggest producer of onion. And then I saw this storage owned by the co-op of onion farmers. It's empty and they have listed to a middleman. So in the agricultural economic sabotage law, mm. we are pe penalizing also the, the co-op which we gave uh, what you call this st storage warehouse or storage facility that they are liable also and the penalty is life sentence also and non bailable so because the, the uh, government gave them warehouse okay. and they are not allowing the farmers to use the warehouse instead they are leasing it to the middleman the, it's the easy way of uh, earning money so yes. it's madali parang Pero to just just to trace the history of that of that uh, cold storage facility, bed yeah. or warehouse, cold storage facility. Cold storage okay. facility. That was built by government. The government. Funds. Government. Okay. Government was given to the co-op. Given in the sense that 
it was donated to the co-op and it's now uh, a property of the co-op? Yes. Ah, so gano, that's, that's our, that's oh, the program uh, of the yes. DA? Yes, yes. If you give it to the co-op, then the co-op will run it. Is it a use of rock or really a donation? Donation. Donation. Okay, so we have such, how, how long have we had such a program, uh, Mr. It President? has been that way. And how much have we spent for that in totality? Kunyari, uh, ito up, to, nine up to today, anong estimate? Estimate lang, no need to be that accurate. Uh, nine is 370 N million, so uh, 40 million each. And yes, how many of these cold storage facilities have we built over the years and uh, given no to co-ops? Pinibigay yeah. pala sa co-ops? Since si, 16. 16 since 2018. 16 since 2018. Okay, so madaling i-monitor po 16. 16 lang, 16 po yan. Apa. Pero that was uh, uh, 2018. Hindi pa natin in-account yung before 2018. Ah, opa. Sige po. So maybe uh, we so, should ask DA to account for yes. all the storage facilities that they have given to the co-ops. Secretary, so we will have an idea. Secretary, an example of, you know, the asking for data and <laughs> the DA should be, uh, should have this data on their uh, fingertips, uh, Mr. Secretary. Okay, so for, so, yung reason of lack of storage facility, asagot natin, we build nine for uh, next year. Saan po ito located? Uh, Ando na po, uh, the the budget law already determines the location of the nine. Wala nang discretion to change the location of the nine. Uh, 2023 uh, uh, Occidental, dalawa sa Occidental Mindoro, isa sa dalawa sa Nueva Ecija, mm -hmm. sa Bataan, Nueva Vizcaya, and Pangasinan. Apa? Nueva Vizcaya, Pangasinan. Okay. So the the uh, areas or the places have been predetermined and they cannot be changed. Yan na. It is the law. Under construction na eh. Ah, so just, uh, so the, the amount uh, is parang uh, a second phase funding to finish the project? No, it's hindi pa to yung ano 2024. Ito yung 2023. And uh, 2024 is uh, one in Pangasinan, one in Nueva Vizcaya, one in Isabela, two in Nueva Ecija, one in Pampanga, one in Tarlac, one in Oxid Oriental Mindoro, and one in Occidental Mindoro. All in Luzon. Okay, so thank you. Uh, you call cold storage uh, facilities po yan because sa hearings natin isang uh, reason po yan. Sa hearings po natin, uh, Mr. President, naalala ko rin yung Onion Farmers of Mindoro. Sabi nila, at a certain price per kilo, if the if the produce is sold here in Manila at that certain price, happy na sila. Yes, so parang yes, yeah, parang may sinabi silang ganung amount. One, 100 pesos. Right, 100 pesos. And then so in, in effect, uh, all in na po yun. So production cost plus transportation cost. So, so ito po Kasi nga 25 pesos per kilo ang cost eh. Uh, so the transportation cost or logistics cost must not uh, uh, go beyond 75 pesos, you know, and then yeah. they will be happy with the, with, with the price. So, so siguro, uh, in the future budget of the Secretary, where he has now a direct hand participation in crafting the budget, maglagay po kayo ng isang program, activity or uh, project, on to, to address this uh, post-production stage but before market stage uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Secretary I, I hope I'm using the right terms but you know what you know what I mean uh, Mr. Secretary uh, Pag uh, binili mo yung onions sa uh, farm 
it's 50 pesos, 49 pesos per kilo. Mm -hmm. And the retail price in Metro Manila uh, recently, November 14, uh, local red onion is uh, 120 to 200 per kilo. Local white onion is 100 to 170 per kilo. Imported white onion, 80 to 180 pesos per kilo. So, wide, wide ang range. But uh, you can see that we can really sell it at 100. Yes, pero ang, sa tingin, ang pagkaintindi ko sa farmer, sila pa rin dapat yung nagbibenta nung at that price. Kung, kung, oh. tra kung trader na yun, eh, na hindi pa rin po sila oh. happy dun sa presyo. Sige, uh, so we have, we have shown na Bumaba na po, onions lang po itong pinainano natin, no? but theoretically applicable siguro to other commodities. We have shown that the price, the prices of the different kinds of onions are now at the more normal levels. Mm -hmm. can, we can we explain what happened that brought them down to more normal levels? Ano nangyari? Alam mo, yung talagang 600 to 700, cartel yun. Ka uh, it's not really the price. We allow the cartel to do it. That's why we are passing this economic sabotage law kasi abuse na yun eh. That's abuse. Uh, whose job was it, uh, Mr. President, to blunt or negate the cartel's uh, activities and plans, Mr. President? In effect, labanan sila at uh, kasuhan, hanapin sila at kasuhan sila. Is that the ace mandate? This is the first time we're going to pass a law against cartel. Uh, it's the job sana ng Philippine Competition Commission but they have uh, yes. they did not um, uh, 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 gave enough time for that. So uh, that's why we're passing the economic sabotage law. That's why I'm telling you, uh, yes, yes. Mr. Minority Floor yes. Leader, that you have we have to pass it. Yes, kasi we, we are really being abused. We will, we will, we will pass it. I, I, I already stated my support, uh, Mr. President. Bayaran lang tayong, we're, we're just uh, making sure that you know, it will not be struck down as unconstitutional. Pero, um, uh, Mr. President, uh, I think that is not the case because parang binibigyan natin ng free pass and DA. My staff uh, informs me that under the Price Act, punishable na po car cartel uh, behavior, and it is the, juris the responsibility of the DA. Oh. Uh, can the experts in the DA uh, tell us well, what's the state of the law as of this moment, even without the bill uh, mentioned by our sponsor? So, yeah. huh? For I guess. Of, yes, for agricultural products, it should be the, the DA. Pero cartel ang ganyan sa cartel. Smuggling yung mga na-file. Uh, they have filed cases against agricultural smuggling, but I have to see record of them filing cases against cartel. So, ang tanong, bakit hindi nagamit yung existing law doon sa kaso ng onion na umabot sa 800? Yan lang tanong. Can the... All timers in the DA uh, give us uh, uh, an explanation. So, I think uh, we have failed in that. So, uh, we're trying to. Uh, Smuggling lang ang mga na-file nilang cases, but never uh, against the price act. Okay, sige. Sige po. Thank you for the admission, but uh, all of these are behind us now. We have a new leader in the uh, department who looks to me to be a reformer. Dala niya po ang disiplina ng private sector. Dala niya ang uh, experience, dis discipline, and of course, the, the demand okay. for uh, efficiency uh, and They have uh, given me, uh, uh, minority floor leader, they gave me, uh, they're trying to file a case against Leia Cruz. Oo. 
uh, which who has uh, six companies uh, operating uh, onion yeah. batu silaya yeah. bros oh, oh. but uh, uh, what what is that status They are investigating doubt together with the Philippine Competition Commission against uh, Leia Cruz. Uh, but this Leia Cruz has been there for a long, long time. Long time. Yes. I have been the chairman of agriculture since 2013, and when I entered, uh, there is already a Leia Cruz. <laughs> so I guess it's taking them a long, long time. And I noticed the words used by our sponsor, they are trying to file a case. Ang layo-layo pa po nung trying, Mr. President. So, at any rate, we wish the Anti-Smuggling Task Force or Office of the DA all the best. And I think we funded you eh, for 2023. For 2023. Ah, I made an amendment to, to also give funding to the Anti-Smuggling Airports yeah. of the DA. They said that they issued a warrant of arrest to uh, the court, uh, siguro. the court. Yeah, uh. Mer, uh, to uh, Jason De Rojas Takulog, and they have arrested him this morning. Oh, so that's good news. Oh, smuggling for smuggling. Smuggling, smuggling. Okay. Be, uh, is he a large-scale smuggler? Large-scale uh, smuggler. Okay. Uh, in they, what commodities? Onions daw. Onions, onions also. Daw. 30 containers daw of onions. And uh, they have uh, filed in court 15 cases, but five dismissed cases. Uh, it's, it's ano talaga. It's, uh, you can see that everything is dismissed by the court. That's why... I want them to to be non-bailable para at least ko i-dismiss man ng court na karanas na siya makulong. Eh alam mo mayayaman sila ayaw nila makulong. Kaya yun ang provision ng ating econo anti-economic sabotage law. At least uh, if uh, if you are rich and you will go to prison, you will not do it anymore because you don't have to do it. Kaya pina-explain ko kay Minority Floor Leader para alam niya yung uh, story ng ating anti-agricultural economic so, sabotage. Prosecutor's so. office lang ang nagdi-dismiss because of the lack of authority. Opo, we have uh, studied the bill uh, in detail and uh, we will really work on it. Okay, the next question is, uh, is there any other commodity which, be, which would be as susceptible as onion? To price manipulation, smuggling, etc. Rice. Rice. What else? Uh, sugar. Almost sugar. all. Sugar. Almost all. Garlic. All? No. Uh, okay. So can 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 you mention at least uh, three other commodities? Commodities para. Kasi ang next tanong ko anong na anong na lessons na. Meron din frozen ha? meat, ha? Frozen meat. Oh, kasi yung opal yung yung. Uh, hindi magandang meat ang ano niyan ang 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 tariff niyan is 5%. Yung magandang meat is 35%. So the people uh, the people from abroad who are sending the meat here were saying na lahat daw ng pinadala nila kahit good meat idinideclare dito as offal. Oh, yun ang practice nila. Kaya marami din yan. Okay, we, I don't think we need a new law for that. No, kung ganyan, kasi we are given a state of facts. No, good meat declared as offal. Mm -hmm. That should be. Is that uh, outright smuggling uh, or technical smuggling? Technical smuggling. Technical smuggling. Dapat pala ilagay okay, natin uh, sino po ang expected na ahensya na mak makahuli ng technical smuggling? Customs. 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 Apa, customs. Apa. Tama-tama, sa Friday naman ang budget ng customs. Pwede natin sila i-confront po dito sa pangyayaring ito. So, Mr. President, uh, we heard about the establishment of the first 
border facility somewhere in uh, Bulacan and I think it has the ground the groundbreaking ceremony has been held for this uh, can we can we get an update on the status of this uh, project as well as its uh, budgetary implication uh, mr. president uh, you know uh, we are since 2019 we were giving the Department of Agriculture budget to establish a uh, uh, first border facilities because in the first border facilities we have a laboratory okay. so if you will uh, try to bring in uh, uh, agricultural products which have diseases mm. then we will know because there is a laboratory but unfortunately uh, we have failed to establish a first border facility uh, in 2019, we gave a budget, but they did not. And then this 2023, we have a budget again for first border facility, two and a half billion to establish first border facility, one in Bulacan for Luzon, one in Cebu for Visayas, and one in Davao City for Mindanao. But up to now, if you will receive the, the, the disbursement of... Uh, uh, that first border facility, it's zero, zero. So uh, we are not enthusiastic about the first border facility. So I am telling the secretary to make sure that we are able to build these three border facilities because it will discourage smuggling and at the same time uh, uh, prevent the entry of d diseases to our uh, agricultural products kasi ang biggest burden ngayon ng livestock would be ASF and then yung poultry is avian flu diba i think uh, we have lost 200 billion pesos yung ating livestock industry because of ASF and i i hope that they will be more enthusiastic in building this first border facilities for the benefit of our farmers and fisher folks. Okay, thank you. No, but I've read the news report uh, about one such first border facility. Yeah, in Bulacan. So, kumusta na po yun? Uh, eh, zero pa nga ang disbursement eh. We inaugurated, we, uh, we, ano, we ground break, but uh, if you would see the report two, of, two ano, million, of DA, uh, construction of Cold examination facility in agriculture, CEFA, hmm. a zero. Obligation rate, zero. Disbursement rate, zero. So I guess we have to improve this in the near okay. future. Ako po, uh, uh, this will be a, parang, uh, a facility with uh, laboratory equipment and uh -huh. so. Okay, and I, parking I, lot. Parking lot. So lighting. I understand yung we prevent the introduction of diseases through our mm. uh, food imports or mm. import import of commodities. Yeah, yes. But why will this prevent smuggling? Uh, because uh, we're more strict, diba? And at the same time, the, the first border facility is the first inspection ng uh, imported goods. So if we have a first border facility, that is strict, then we will prevent smuggling. Today, kasi wala eh. Wala. Yeah, my worry is, parang itong ating first border facility is a couple of a couple of kilometers away from the ports of entry, so... Oh, we have no is, choice. Is, isn't, the, is, isn't the distance uh, also critical na baka all the more may magkaroon ng diversion but, of goods, uh, Mr. President? Nilalagyan ng tracking system yung mga truck na nanggaling sa uh, Pierre. And the who, tracking system. Who will, who will make that as a requirement? What agency will DA. impose that requirement? DA. DA. BAE. BAE. Okay. So they're ready. They're, they're, they're ready to do it. I mean, yeah, of course. We have, we, have the bud, we have the budget. We have the item in the 2024 budget. They have been that. doing that, but in a different process. So it's nothing new. Nothing new. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. So, siguro, with the new secretary, wala daw, well, there's no, na groundbreaking na, pero, 
Andiyan, okay, nag, nag groundbreaking na nandiyan na yung funding hindi gumagalaw. So that's I think that's uh, how I understand the the answer to be Mr. President. Well, Mr. President, uh, let's go to the let's talk about the committee report Mr. President. Pagdating po sa office of the secretary, our committee report, the Senate's committee report, reduces it, the budget for the office of the secretary, by 22 billion. Nanggaling siya sa 114 billion. Reduced, ha, ang aming Senate committee. Ang ending is 92.1 billion pesos. May we get an explanation from our sponsor? Why did we reduce and what did we reduce? Uh, that's the 2020 uh, the 2023 guys the office of the secretary is 85 billion okay. billion but in the 2024 nep is 92 billion so it did not we increase, increase yes so, so we touch uh, so what we what to reduce was the gab level so that means uh uh, marami pa palang issues to be threshed out at the BICAM as far yes. as the budget of the DA is concerned. Because uh, the one uh, uh, passed by the lower house is bigger. Uh, yes, yes. So you know. we have to settle that. So, so on, on what issues did we disagree with the house? Kasi binabaan po natin yung house version by 22 billion. Malaking halaga po yun. That's why I just want to ask, ano po yung mga big ships po in the, in the budget? Starting from the house uh, version, Isabel. Yung National Irrigation Administration. Uh, from 41, ginawa nilang 81. Additional 40 billion. Hindi, ma'am, ma we can limit ourselves to the office of the secretary muna. Walang masyadong difference sa office of the secretary. Our NEP is 13.5. Sa kanila is 13.5 din. Hindi masyado. Ang malaki yung sa national irrigation. And Philippine Fisheries Development Authority, ito yung ports. And then Philippine Coconut Authority. O, tapos, doon, attached corporations ang ano. Dito sa ano, hindi masyado. Mr. President, uh, the decrease is not really a decrease. It's a, it's a uh, proceeds of the loan, which they transferred from the office of the secretary to the um, program funds. Oh, that's usually the way they do it here in the Senate. Oh, but it's still there, except that it's transferred to another account. And the 20 billion was given by the House to AMAS, the Agribusiness and Marketing Services, 20 billion. But they did not explain where, how it will be spent. Kaya tinanggal ng Senado yon. So that's a total of 22 Thank billion. Thank you for being... Vigilant and uh, strict with our budget. Uh, think we thank our sponsors. Siya yung responsible niyan. Well, Mr. S uh, Mr. President, uh, alalakin budgets kasi na ibang attached uh, agencies, but you know, I participated in the committee hearing for Nia naman. So just... We are not against the budget. We just want it explained Correct, how it will be used. Yes. And we also look at the track record, the past yes. usage of uh, past budgets, uh, Mr. Yes. President. Sige, ang importante malaman nila eh, dito sa Senado ay eh, nabubusisi din po sila, Mr. President. So can we can we just uh, siguro explain the the uh, big amounts in the DA's budget for next year? For example, uh, sa NEP, NEP, NEP amounts po to, no? kasi hindi ko pa na-analyze yung ating committee report uh, amounts. Eh. 33 billion is set aside for the production support services for various commodities. What, what is this for? Uh, what is this program all about, uh, Mr. President? And then after spending 33 billion pesos next year, 
Ano po ang mararamdaman ng taong bayan na benepisyo dito? Hindi ko makita yun. Nasaan yung jersey tree? Kira nip ito sa ano ba yung committee? As a office of the president. Ha? Office of the president? Office of the secretary. Secretary apa? Wala ba itong koa? Voucher, voucher kasi. Uh, kasi ang mga major programs sa uh, Office of the Secretary are the National Rice Program, the National Corn Program, the National Livestock Program, the National High Value Crop Program, the National Organic Agriculture Program, the National Urban and Peri-Urban Program. So doon dadalhin yung mga programa, yung mga pera na ibinibigay dito. So Apo, sige para na malaman ng ating mga kababayan, uh... Uh, this program we, uh, is uh, focused on improving productivity and sustainability. Yung katulad ng sinabi ni, ni Secretary, promotion of modern, high-yielding, and climate-resilient seeds and planting materials, fingerlings, fry, broodstock, and animals distributed to farmers, fisher folks, and any other beneficiaries engaged in agriculture and fishery. So, yun yung ano. Ito ba kasali din? Hindi ko yung notes. Hindi ko makita yung... Just for the information of the, of the public, uh, Mr. President, we have more than 9 billion pesos for seed vouchers distribution. So, parang seed distribution project ito, Mr. President. And uh, for fertilizer yes, voucher. Fertilizer, yes. And for... For fertilizer, more than also more than 9 billion pesos. Okay. Yes. So siguro ang next step natin na sagutin or siguro mag-information dissemination na lang kayo how to avail. How to avail unless predetermined na ang recipients nito. No, we Ar have a RSBSA. It's okay. the Registry of, of Basic Sector in Agriculture. Hmm. But we are trying to solve this problem because it's very hard to make this list. There are many complaints. So I think they are studying how and uh, how to to make this successful, this RSBSA. And I think the World Bank is going to help us uh, by an aid to improve this RSBSA. We are, according to my notes, we are appropriating 202.9 million to update the registry system for basic yes, sectors yes. in agriculture. Is but that the World Bank loan uh, process no, no. or G the, GAA? The World Bank will give additional, additional technical support so that we can improve this. Because if you When was this last updated? Ano year? No, we are updating it every day. <laughs> every day. The problem is uh, the one implementing this are the uh, yung nasa local government na uh, municipal agriculture office na controlled by the local government sometimes uh, bias eh. Ginagamit nung local government to give benefit not to the farmers but to their political allies. So nagkaka problema yung R yung ating uh, registry system for basic sector in agriculture. That's why World Bank would like to try to help us. Kasi pag mali yung list mo, di hindi napupunta sa tunay na beneficiary yung ibibigay natin. We're back to the garbage in, garbage out. Yes, uh, yes. So we are trying to improve this and I guess our new secretary will, will be one of your projects that we have a better RSBSA. That registry is the responsibility of the department. Yes, okay. yes. Except that, siyempre, nangungunsulta sila sa, sa lokal. And then, sinasabi ninyo yung may pabor, may pabor, pabor. Mm, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I am suggesting that we transfer it back to the Department of Agriculture, yung ating uh, kahit provincial ano, agriculture then, worker para hindi bias. Hindi, as of the moment nga, as, ang sagot nyo sa akin kanina, it's, it's the responsibility of the DA. Now. Yeah, but oh. but ang gumagawa is local, yung municipal agricultural oh, okay. uh, agriculture office, but, but, which but, is not DA. Oh, oh. Yes, but the current system, how it is done, has the blessings of the DA. So we yeah. have new we have new eyes yes. from, from our new secretary. Yeah. Just ref, have you have to reform, Mr. Secretary, the, the system, because ang, uh, oh, ang ang intended beneficiaries natin sa seed distribution natin 1.37 million. Sa fertilizer voucher natin, 2.2 million intended beneficiaries. Oh.
Tapos kung hindi farmers siya. <laughs> Oo, oh, yun nga. Eh. Yun oh. nga. And there are many complaints. So we are trying to improve. Oh. Sige po. Uh, well, at any rate, uh, uh, siguro it is uh, anong topic doon? Providential that during the budget hearing of the DA, they have a new secretary who is representing them. So medyo mas linyan tayo sa new secretary. Wala siyang hand talaga dito sa crafting of this budget. Uh, We'll give you a chance, uh, sir, to reform your department. Malaki po ang ang halaga na binibigay po natin sa DA and the family of the DA. Kadiwa, ang masasabi ko lang sa kadiwa, it's so it's a transient marketplace po, di ba? And it's bound, of course, by by the time and place. Kaya nga appeal ko nga kay secretary. Huwag lang sana ang achievement namin natin that we are able to sell uh, at more reasonable prices agricultural products at the Kadiwa stores. Let it be, the, let the aim be nationwide in all markets, especially uh, a, a non-artificial market like Kadiwa. Sa lahat dapat ng public markets na ma-access ma ng Pilipino, dapat reasonab reasonably priced ang, uh, ang mga commodities po natin, agricultural products and commodities. Just, just, just a comment, ma'am. Uh, unless the sponsor wants to react. Uh, I just want to inform you that the DA is not operating the stores. They yes. are the event organizer of Kadiwa. Yes. So they, they, ano, they organize the one selling in mm. Kadiwa, mm. but they are not the seller. Oh, para hindi kasi business ang yes. DA. Eh. Pag uh, bis, nag business na abuse, eh. like what happened. Uh, we filed a case to those who bought onions for Kadiwa. They bought the onions for 525 pesos per kilo, and may sinabi pa yung ano na hindi na di deliver isang truck lang pa balik balik. Hindi pa nagkasya na ang mahal mahal ng onion. Hindi pa dinili ano pa ghost delivery pa. Kaya parang hindi maganda for DA to operate kadiwa. They're just helping the sellers, the retailers, to be organized as a kadiwa. Ganun ang model. Yes, but we incur expenses uh, to the tune of uh, 267 million pesos. Because you Kadiwa. help them get organized in a place where they can sell their products. So you help them in transportation, you help them in in uh, preparing the place and maybe renting the place for them so they can sell. So marami ring expansion. Parang imaginein mo na lang kung maggagawa ka ng market in places where they will sell. So it's expensive also. Yes, precisely, uh, Mr. President. So, para sa akin, parang artificial. Eh. So, because the government absorbed uh, some of the expenses related to selling to the market. Eh, dapat general plan yan. Na pagbenta ni farmer sa market, eh, reasonable price pa rin po. Because you know, mm. not only production, but logistics, transportation, whatever you call them, the other incidental expenses must be reasonable. But this is to help the small farmers be able to sell directly to the consumer. We are trying to remove the middleman. So the government is spending so that the the poor farmers can go to the consumer directly through this kadiwa. So talagang ano tulong to para sa sa mga small and micro enterprises. Are we are we rotating the venues for the kadiwa? Yes, yes, we're changing the we're going around the Philippines. We're rotating the venues. Different venues para. Okay, so thank you. Ah, siguro just ah, if this representation will appreciate a report on. The effectivity of this Kadiwa program. So we will ask the in Amas to give you a report on sa ansila nagstablish ng Kadiwa all over the Philippines, so you can appreciate that all the farmers from the different provinces are given a chance to sell their products directly to the consumer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yung nabanggit pong insidente ng ating sponsor, meron niyatang yung pag pagbibili ng onion at... Uh, FTI uh, yes, po yun. Uh, yes. Nangyari um, sa FTI. And I think na may nadamay na some DA uh, personnel doon. So, yes. let this be a, a lesson to all. We're not, we're not ju judging the, you know, the the guilt of this uh, accused. No? They have the right to be presumed uh, innocent. Pero, ayaw natin mangyari sa atin yun. So, let this be... Let this be a warning, na lang. If not a lesson, but a warning. That's why the Kadiwa is not selling anymore. It's they're just arranging the small farmers and fisher folks to be able to sell at certain places. Not them selling anymore because it can be abused. Ito po. Merong kayong magandang programa actually. Hindi malaki ang budget, 100 million. 
Mas hindi masyado malaki, malaki na 100 million, hindi masyado malaki. The Young Farmers Challenge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can uh, ano po yan? How how yeah. how can the our, how can our constituents avail of this uh, program? Ano ano uh, po ba ito in the first place? Oh. Ikukuwento ko sa iyo kasi Sige. may tatlong bata galing Las Piñas na nanalo dito. Oh. Oh, one invented the kasi yung aming Fisher Fox nakakahuli ng ano tawag doon? Tahong. And then this three young people, they invented the uh, pizza na made of tahong and then hamburger made of tahong and then yung bottle tahong and they won and sabi nila sa akin kasi pumunta sila sa akin tuwan-tuwa sila pinakain nila ako nung product nila eh sabi nila na, na, na naka-premyo sila ng tig-80,000 for winning that's on the local le level and then one of them were able to participate in the regional level so may local may regional may national So this is yung young farmers. Hindi hindi lahat necessarily like the youth from Las Piñas na uh, maraming models na nananalo. So this is for young people. Tuwan-tuwa sila eh. Oh, yes. oh. Please uh, department please disseminate information about this challenge. Uh, sana palawakin natin ang ano ang participation apo. Sige po. And uh, what is the current status of the implementation of the Young Farmers Challenge Program? As of August 31, a total of 3,546 applicants nationwide has pre-registered for the YFC startup. Among these applicants, the total number of startup provincial level awardees is 654. To date, the said provincial awardees are now starting their operation in time for the regional level competition on October 4 to November 1. For the uh, Young Farmers Upscale Competition, a total of 48 previous awardees were declared as regional level upscale awardee. The top ranking awardee in each region will move on to the national level competition in December 2023. In preparation for the said national competition, the DA AMAS will conduct a coaching and mentoring activity among young farmers. In addition, as of September, September 31, a total of nine enterprises from various state universities and colleges were declared YFC Intercollegiate Awardees. The National Program Management Team and Regional Program Management are continuing their efforts to monitor the new and previous YFC awardee to make sure that they will continue their enterprise implementation. So we are making, uh, we are encouraging the youth to become entrepreneurs. Uh, Agri entrepreneurs. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So I, I support the program. So, uh, Mr. President, last year I attended the uh, fully the our committee hearings on the agriculture, but this year I wasn't able to participate that much, Mr. President. So, just allow me to ask some random questions, uh, Mr. President. For example, to address to the National uh, Dairy Author Authority, how much of uh, the Philippine uh, consumption of dairy products is being now domestically produced? Uh, they, they produce 1% of our dairy demand. That was oh. the last year's figure. Eh, hindi yeah. yeah. increase hindi That's why uh, okay. uh, in the hearing, I told them that they have to increase it by 20% in five years. Oh, oh. And Sige I pa. told them, you give me what you need, so I will give you, so you make that 20% in five years. That's uh, 5%, uh, yeah, 4% so a yeah. year. Oh, oh. And uh, mukhang hirap na hirap sila. But what the model is, uh, to justify a processing equipment, you need to give the co-op uh, 50 animal. Oh, so that's the model. 50 animal, one processing machine, and then they give a dairy box where they can sell their products. And that is uh, ang ano eh, 11 million, di ba? Ang cost. So we will be giving every year uh, uh, different co-ops with this model. Because uh, we have tested this model and it is uh, good. So, and uh, I got this model when I went to Pagadian City because the OSAID gave the wives of farmers uh, a dairy animal, cow, and then they distribute one in each to each uh, farmer, uh, wives, wife of farmers. And uh, minimum daw na nakukuha nilang milk is five. 5 liters. So that's uh, at 60 pesos, that's 300 a day. So the wife earns around 9,000 a month. Umiiyak yun sa tuwa eh. Kasi that is women empowerment. Oo, nagkakatrabaho. 
yung wives of farmers. Oo. So that's the model Sige. we are doing. And the and the ano, the co-op will process. They will buy from the farmers and they will process and they will sell it to DepEd because uh, I inserted in the feeding program of DepEd that they should buy from the co-op of farmers. So meron Thank na silang you. market. Oo. And that is the model which we are doing in every uh, kung may mga co-op sa every town in the Philippines and hopefully uh, masaya naman sila maganda ang result ng mga initial ano namin Thank you Madam Sponsor uh, ang bayit ng uh, sp ang chairman ng ating subcommittee walang nag-improve sa data 1% pa rin 272 ang uh, GAB budget dinagdagan niya ng 250 million pa <laughs> kahit wala tayong nakitang improvement so ganyan kabait ang ating subcommittee eh, chair hindi, kasi uh, Pag ang mahirap nating mga kabataan, hindi natin pinainom ng milk, hindi magiging intelligent o at magiging sakitin. Pag yung mahirap na, hindi mo pa ginawang intelligent, wala nang pag-aasang makaahon sa kahirapan yon. So we have to be patient with patient. our program. Okay. Oh. Because, as if I remember correctly, we also did that this year. Yes. And yet, 1% is still 1%. So how, eh kasi, how, how long should our patients be? Kasi tumadami ang population. So kahit tumaas ang Uh, ano, hindi makahabol sa increase in population kasi it's a percentage of population, population. eh. Kaya nag increase naman yung production kaso hindi makahabol do sa increase in population. That's why we have to help them more para we will make a difference. Kaya tinatarget ko 20%, 20 in 5 years, 4% a year. Hopefully, if we give them more budget and we do oversight to make sure that they are using the budget properly, then uh, we can improve our milk Uh, production Who is the, the head Philippines. of the National Dairy Authority? Uh, Sir, anong, uh, what's, the, ano pangalan? what's the name of the, our head? Gabriel Lagamayo, oh, the NDA. Yes. And the uh, Philippine Sir. Carabao, dalawang agency eh. I know, I know. Uh, oh, Philippine Carabao. Caro Salses. Alam mo, nung una ako magbigay ng ganitong project, I got it from my entitlement as a senator. 170 million. Philippine Carabao Center. Aba, ibinili ng mga kotse. Hindi ipinamigay na carabao at saka processing equipment. Pina-audit ko sa COA, sa National COA, na, na ah. pinag-retire. Kaya ngayon, mabait na yung Philippine Carabao Center. So, ngayon, kasunod na tong NDA. Siguro pa, kukuha ko din to para bumait to. Okay. Nako, Sige. ayun, oh. nagagalit sa Filmec na may request siya last year. Walang binigyan to sa request niya. Okay. Eh, defer na defer, defer. Natin, yeah, We are not talking about the film uh, this, this oh. Oh. Okay, so narinig ng dalawang heads yung uh, appeal ng aming uh, committee chair, uh, subcommittee chairperson. Okay. Patience. Okay. We, we will give you give, we will give you time to uh, prove the effectivity of your, your programs. Pero siyempre, lahat may hangganan. I hope the secretary is not as uh, As a lenient as our uh, sponsor, uh, Secretary Medyo. Dem demand the results, uh, Secretary. Anyway, yan naman yun. Okay, uh, another random question to the National Food Authority. Uh, National Food Authority, I heard, wala tayong buffer stock. Isn't that the function yes, of the yes. NFA? Uh, the yata, NFA uh, is given 9 billion budget every year to buy from local farmers. As of today, he used 5 500 million, di ba? Of the 9 billion. That's why we don't have any November buffer na. stock okay. on November. Okay, but siguro, in fairness to the NFA, can we, have an, can we get an explanation? Why uh, is this the case? Okay. You Maka, suspend the rules uh, so he will defend himself. Okay, Mr. President, uh, uh, Joel, isa lang, last na to. One, sus suspend the rules. Last so I suspend it. Uh, no, no, no. no the, okay. the, the, the rules so that the head Mr. of the NFA Mr. can, uh, can uh, address us. Per request of our I would my motion, Mr. President. Okay. I move that we suspend our rules and uh, I, I thought, allow... I thought the sponsor was walking out. That's why I was <laughs> going to suspend. And allow, Mr. President, the uh, resource persons to uh, answer directly okay, no. the questions being raised by our minority leader. I so okay. move, Mr. President. Uh, the motion is to suspend the rules. There being no objection and duly approved by the minority. Such as rules are suspended to allow the resource persons to answer directly the queries of the minority floor leader. Yes, sir. Take, take your seat, sir. Okay. Please uh, introduce yourself, yes. uh, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. President, I'm Rodrigo Bioko from uh, of uh, Malay, I know from Malay Balay, yeah, Bukid Don. Yes, <laughs> kababayan ko yan. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I would like to um, answer, Mr. President, uh, the query of uh, our um, Uh, minority Leader, uh, Mr. President. Um, I actually discussed this uh, a few times with uh, 
with the minority leader, I had a chance with him. Now, um, we already increased our uh, minimum guarantee price from 19 pesos to 23. You know, the NFA Council, as headed, headed by the president himself, you know, called for the meeting. Um, immediately, uh, that was in uh, September, late September. You know, and we were hoping that uh, we could uh, be able to raise our buffer stock. And at that time, because of the price cap, prices of Palai, uh, there was a downward pressure from a very high price hmm. before the start of the season of 30 pesos. It went down below uh, 21 pesos. Hmm. And that's, that concerned our president. And uh, he wanted to play fair and give uh, our farmers a chance to make more money, hmm. um, especially that uh, for the, uh, the succeeding planting season, that will be subject to a lot of risk due to El Nino. So we have to motivate our farmers. And we approve as a council uh, the 23 pesos uh, floor, pr floor price for the farmers. Mm. That floor price is also effectively the ceiling price of uh, NFA to buy. Then uh, as soon as we announced that, there was a rebound in prices to 24 to 25 pesos immediately no, in the market. And uh, in early October, the price cap was... Uh, so uh, was uh, uh, lifted, lifted uh. and there was a ratcheting of uh, prices in Palai. Uh. So as much as 27, 28 pesos. Mm -hmm. As of now, it's already 30 plus pesos in uh, Intercity, mm -hmm. which is the bellwether for uh, rice prices of Greater Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. at, the, at that price, uh, according to our president, as much as we want to give our farmers uh, a good price, uh, we were we well aware of the of the um, possibility that palay prices may even exceed 25. Hmm. So we uh, we de debated in the council whether we even go as high as 25. Hmm. But then uh, we also uh, know for a fact that uh, that would be inflationary. No? And whether um, <clears throat> if we buy a 25 and the, you know, the private sector will buy uh, much higher, um, inflation should be market driven. It should not be something that the government is... Uh, uh, initiating. So, while we we are not successful in the sense uh, that we couldn't raise the buffer stock because the prices of palay are just too high during this season. This is the highest in the history of is the it, Philippines. Is that a legal impediment? Or a decision lang po ninyo not to buy at a price higher than 23 pesos per kilo? Or is it the law which ties your hands? Uh, uh, not exactly, uh, um, <clears throat> um, Senator. Um, it is, a, it is a decision of the council. Okay. While we want to set the price as a guarantee to our farmers uh, in uh, respect to the um, Magna Carta of Small Farmers, uh, mm -hmm. RA 7607, but then uh, we cannot price it too high also because that would be detrimental to our uh, consumers because that will set uh, the price, uh, the buying price also uh, by the private sector. While we only buy 5% or 10% of, of the market, the 90 percent uh, would follow or even higher but how, so, about, but how about your mandate to maintain a buffer stock di ba well, mandate mandate po ba yan sa batas yes mandate what is the uh, the period of time na dapat may buffer stock tayo uh, sa ngayon based on the IRR nine days nine nine days yes nine, so, nine days ang mandated by law through yes the, effectively through, yes through the IRR through the IRR yes okay we are not compliant with the, the, we, with the nine days supply yeah one okay. De, basta Wag na natin i-announce yung what is our buffer stock yeah. but we are not compliant with the 9 days. Yes, yes Mr. Senator. So you're balancing nga, you're balancing your mandates eh pero merong yung mas clear yung mandate for you to maintain a buffer stock. I think yun na nga yun na yata yung ginawang main role ninyo eh actually. Yeah, yes, Mr. So uh, you must in good faith and through best efforts comply with that mandate. Yes. Hanapin yes. niyo uh, hanapin niyo sweet spot where you can uh, comply with your mandate, uh, Mr. President. Um, 9 billion yung ammunition na binigay po sa inyo. 9 billion na pesos ang ammunition nyo for that to perform your mandate. So, just a suggestion kasi sana the, the contingency that we are guarding against, that's why we need a, con a buffer stock, will not happen. Kasi kung mangyari yun, balik, balik na naman sa NFA ang, ang, ang focus ng attention and why you have failed to comply with your mandate. Uh, I, I do not think the, the law tied your hands. Eh. So there is a way. Mag brainstorming na po kayo dyan kasi you're, you're the experts. But there must be a way. Okay. To increase the buffer stock, come, uh, come closer to the, to the period uh, or to the, to the quantity mandated by law. 
Is it a mandate of the law or just uh, guidance lang na may, you may maintain a buffer stock? Ano ba sabi ng law? You shall maintain a buffer stock? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. That's, uh, Mr. President, that's the main function of NFA to maintain a buffer Thank stock you, to cover the calamity relief requirements of the DSWD, uh, local government, and other uh, agencies. And maybe to guard against uh, a contingency or an event uh, which will be catastrophic for the entire country. Maybe isang, isang reason din yun, di ba? Yes, yeah, yes Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, that, this one, sir. I just want to explain that before, uh, the function of the NFA is to import yeah. and at the same time buy from the local farmers. And there was shortage, uh, increase in price of rice in 2018. That's why we passed the uh, uh, rice tarification law, which liberalized the importation of rice. We removed the mandate of NFA to buy to import rice, and we gave them their only mandate, which is to only buy mandate. from local farmers. And we gave them nine billion a year to do that. And uh, uh, that's their only function. In fact, during that time, they were asking me to remove NFA. Oh, galit na galit sa inyo yung ano, previous administration. But I said I cannot do that because there are 4,000 employees and I will, they will bash me online every day, those 4,000 employees. So what I did is just to remove your import mandate, you just buy from the local farmers. And then the, the Department of Finance offered early retirement na lang dun sa mga tao sa NFA para mabawasan kasi nabawasan na ng kalahati ang mandate nila. And they said when they offered the early retirement, 50% of the employees retired. So that's your mandate. And uh, I hope you, you, you focus on that mandate because that's your only job. You have to do that. Oh. Eh kasi nagbili kayo nung mahal na ang rice nung beginning pa, mura pa rice hindi kayo bumili, may 9 billion kayo and this 9 billion, Mr. Minority Floor Leader, they do not give it back to the government, it's with them oh, oh. but they sell their rice, it's not for free we buy the rice from them but the 9 billion, they don't return to the government, it's with them it's a, what you call this, a working capital for them, working kaya lalaki ng lalaki to kasi hindi naman to binabawi na ng national government. It's given every year and it's not uh, given back to the national government. So we, we thank the administrator for his explanation. So thank you, uh, Majority Leader. We can go back to our regular procedure. And thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Administrator. Mr. President, may I move that we lift uh, the uh, rules of uh, the Senate and uh, go back to our original uh, procedure? Yes. Programming, Mr. President. There being, no obje there being no objection, the suspension of the rules of the Senate is here. Lifted, Thank you, Mr. President. We are back to our uh, just session. A, yes. Thank you. Just a few more questions. So, as the, so the sponsor is maintaining the nine billion uh, funding of the NFA in the committee report. Yes. So, and dami na nilang corporate funds yan. It will be retained. <laughs> so, I think we should we should review this uh, level, uh, Mr. President. Ano? Kasi sa committee report natin, 9 billion pa rin eh. I mean, yeah. Mr. President. So, but they're, all, they're always uh, um, uh, complaining that they don't have enough money to buy the buffer stock. That's why we, we don't want to be blamed. So we okay. give them every year. A factual question. What's the balance of the funds with the NFA as of the, as of the moment? Hindi. Yung dati mo at yung ngayon mo, ano balance? previous year oh everything so we still have a uh, Oh, yes. Okay. 10 .2. okay, so with this input, uh, I appeal okay. to our sponsor to... Huh? Okay, let's accept the figure. 9 billion. So, maybe that should be sufficient ground to revisit the recommendation of the uh, committee report. Na we will add another 9 billion. Tapos, ikakastiguhin natin sila na hindi nila magamit yung binibigay natin. Eh, bigay naman tayo rin ng bigay, uh, Mr. President. So, I think we are... Baka we are... hindi sila bumili. Yes, but 9 oh, billion... Pag hindi na. sila naman nabili... Eh, tayo naman ang nagsasuffer naman, mga tao. 
'di ba? Kasi pag uh, walang Sige. kasi katulad natin, katulad namin ng mga senador sa kami sa kanila kami bumibili ng ipinamimigay namin during calamity. Hmm. Kasi meron silang okay. warehouse all over the Philippines. So, pag kami bumili, babayaran mo sa Maynila, doon mo nakukunin sa lugar na nag ano, nag uh, calamity. So, nakaka-save ka ng transportation cost. Kaya gusto namin bibili sa kanya. Well, anyway, uh, with, with the facts uh, that we have uncovered tonight, meron pa naman tayong period of amendments. Even if we approve the budget of the NFA, this will still be subject to amendments, Mr. President. So, so Mr. President, si, uh, I participated in the hearing uh, of the budget of the NIA, NIA. The administrator is here. So, administrator, just uh, recall uh, whatever insights that we can, uh, we can derive from the uh, committee hearing, Mr. President. The NIA was given by the House additional 40 billion budget, but there's no uh, explanation on how the 40 billion budget will be spent. So yes. the Senate removed that 40 I, I, billion. I, I, Para yung kanina, yung 20 billion yeah. na binigay, tapos wala namang explanation kung saan nila dadalhin yung pera. Kaya ni-remove natin and they have to explain. It's all right to increase their budget, but they have to explain how they will spend it. So, Yes, because if we if we follow the the gab, eighty one billion yung binigay, mm. that will uh, effectively double no from yes. twenty twenty three GAA. Mm. Tama? So balik naman tayo sa mga absorptive capacity issues with niya. But at any rate, I think we had a very extensive discussion during the committee hearing. Alam na siguro ni administrator our our points no? yung babantayan natin and uh, for you to do a better job. So Mr. President, so siguro ignuhit ng tadhana na at the time that we are discussing the budget of the DA. Uh, the, there was a new uh, secretary appointed and is present before us. A, for the longest time, nanawagan po kami sa minority for the president to appoint a re regular secretary for the department. And finally, nakinig naman ng presidente. And we have now the uh, secretary nominee before us. So, so that's why uh, I'm willing to cut short my interpolation, give you the benefit of the doubt that you are a reformer, you have uh, visionary ideas for the department. We will give you time to implement your plans to be successful. But, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, ang minority po sa Senado, we are uh, uh, critical cooperators. Hindi po kami obstructionist. We will help you succeed. But we will maintain our critical uh, thinking capabilities, uh, Mr. Secretary. Okay? So we wish you all the best, uh, the, DA, the entire DA family. Well, talagang very critical food food production uh, should be our should be our focus, uh, Mr. President. So, so ma ma Madam Sponsor, thank you very much. Uh, thank for, you for, also. Your, for your patience. Okay. Thank you much. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. And at least ang greetings ko sa inyo ngayon hindi good morning, but uh, good evening <laughs> good to good everyone. Evening oh. Thank you very much to the minority floor leader. Thank but you. before we let them go, majority leader, just one question, not a question, just a reiteration of our funding for the CIDA law. You know, I come from a region yes, that yes, produces yes. sugar. Yes. And so I know that the good chairperson, the author of the CIDA law, together with Senator J.V. Arisito, um, really pushed for the budget. And I know for many years, Hinate uh, yung budget ng CIDA from 2 billion by law, naging 1 billion yata, even less. So, madadagdagan kaya, Madam Chair? Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, brought down by the DBM because they did not spend. So now they are requesting that we write to the DBM, all of the senators, so that it will be uh, given back na 2 billion. So we're preparing a letter which we will sign so to, to request the DBM to put back the 1 billion. Okay. So hindi na po ilalagay ito sa budget ng 2024? Susulatan yung DBM? Susulatan natin DBM kasi uh, sila yung may opinion. Alam mo, ang opinion ng DBM, pag hindi mo ini-implement, hindi ba kinakat nila? Opo. Eh, talagang 2 billion yan. Kaya lang, nung mga previous years, yung SRA, na-spend lang 500 million. Kaya bumabayan ng 500 billion. Buti nga, binalik pa na 1 billion. So, ay, nagagalit sila kasi hindi nagagamit. Yes. So, so, or maybe our chairman of uh, the finance committee, we don't have to ask DBM, uh, <laughs> He will give the additional budget to see that. Nagtatago, <laughs> nagtatago na po. Nagtatago well, na. So every, day maybe, that we, every day that we are here in the Senate, there's more uh, people asking maybe for Maybe we should write the funds. letter also. We will write the letter. Yes. Uh, okay. Which yes, we so, will all sign para wala nang problema ang ating finance ano, chairman. <laughs> so hanggang dito lang tayo mga tol. Maraming maraming salamat sa panonood at patuloy na suporta. God bless you sa inyo lahat at hanggang sa muli. Paalam. <laughs>